What's going on guys? This is going to be another Android Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Firebase Crash Reporting. So Firebase Crash Reporting can be very useful for production apps because obviously you don't have access to the user's log files. So very, very difficult to debug problems when say somebody emails you and says, oh, my app crashed during this and that. People are typically very vague and don't give useful information. So having a log that you can look at without having to ask for details from a user can be very, very valuable. I have three different buttons here and they're going to create three different errors and it'll log it in the Firebase Crash Reporting Console. So I'm not going to do a demo for this one because it takes sometimes up to two minutes for a crash report to show up on your Firebase Console. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an app with three buttons and each button is going to create a different error and then I'm just going to show you how they show up in the Firebase console and how you can look at them. So like an example of one of the errors that might show up here is you can see okay we have a null pointer exception it happened in main activity um, looks like and we can see the error. So we can see something tried to convert a string to a string uh, and it was null. So it at least gives you some kind of idea. You know it was on line 42 in main activity so you can go back to your code and check it out. So I'll dismiss that one for now and let's go start a new project. So of course first you need to add Firebase to your application. If you don't know how to add Firebase to your application check out my video it's called What is Firebase and I'll show you how to get, Fire get started with Firebase and how to add it to your Android apps. I've already gone ahead and done that so once that's done we just need to add crash reporting to your app so we click here. Oh if you don't know how to navigate to the Firebase tool go up to to tools, go to Firebase, and it opens up this Firebase Assistant. Then we can go to Crash Reporting and set up Firebase Crash Reporting and then click that button like I just showed you. All right, let's go into Activity Main and throw in our simple layout here. Like always, I've made it ahead of time, so I'm just gonna paste it in. We just have three buttons and an edit text field. Once we're done that, we can close it and go back to Main Activity. Now we're gonna create our tag and declare our buttons and our edit text field. Then declare our buttons and our edit text fields in the onCreate method. Okay, so if we look at the assistant, we can see one type of log we can do is a Firebase crash log. So that's similar to like if we do log D, we can say, you know, on create is starting. Since we're not going to be able to see that log because it's going to be on some user's app, we can grab the Firebase log and paste that here. So we can write to the Firebase log, on create started. Now I'm going to create the on click listener for the first button. And I'm going to create a string variable called text, set it to null, and then try and set the text to the null value. So this is the one that I showed in the demo before. It uh, creates the null pointer exception. I think it was a null pointer exception. And for this error, I'm not going to write anything to the log. I'm going to let the Firebase log do all the work for me. So we're just going to move on to the next button. For the next button, I'm going to create a file not found exception. So I'm going to create a file and then an input stream and then try and read the input stream. But the file path is going to be wrong. So we'll throw an exception. Okay, so we have our file path, our file, which takes the file path, and then our input stream, which takes the file. And then we attempt to read the input stream. So I'm going to surround everything in a try catch. Okay, there's our try catch. I'm just going to close the assistant because these next few lines get kind of long. So I'm going to call Firebase crash and then dot report and new exception, then just a description of the possible error. So we can create, or we could always just print the stack trace. And actually that's what I'll do below here. So I'll copy that, put it down here and it'll be, I'll just inside here, I'll do, um, so I'll just do E dot two string and it will tell me there. All right, let's move on to our next button. In this next button, I'm going to create an array list. I'm going to add some items to it, and then I'm going to try and iterate over the array list. But I'm going to point to a position in the array that doesn't exist. So it will throw an index out of bounds exception. Okay, there we go. Let's give it a little more space down here. And so I add, I create an array list. I add string one, string two, and string three. Then I iterate through the list, but I iterate the very last iteration of the list uh, will be will not exist. So like usually you would go I is less than the list dot size, but I'm gonna do less than or equal to. So on the last iteration of the loop, it will create an error. And actually what I forgot to do is let's go back up top and grab this uh, Firebase crash here, and we're gonna put them in each one of the buttons. So in this one, we'll go button error one clicked, and then log it, and then same with this, but we'll change it to button error two clicked, and then down here, button error three clicked. That way in the log we can see the flow and then we can see sort of exactly where the errors are happening. Ok, 
Okay, that should be good. Let's uh, run it and take a look at the errors that we get. Okay, so we'll bring over our crash reporting and have our app open. This usually, yeah, like on the documentation, it says it can take one to two minutes for an error to show up on the crash report screen. So obviously I can fast forward the video so you won't be waiting. Um, first, I'm gonna click on error one here and we can see the app crashes. Okay, so we can see that our null pointer exception is thrown in main activity on line 45. So if we click and we can see more details of the, uh, of the error. It'll tell you the app version, API level, uh, the device, how many users are impacted, pretty pretty cool stuff and all kinds of, oh wow, I didn't even realize it gave you all this information. So here's the log that I was talking about. So if we look at the app here, so this is the on create started and if we look, that's the on create started and then here's the log from when the button's clicked. All right, now let's uh, take a look at the next error and we'll click on error two this time. So. It, Error 2 won't actually crash the app because we have it surrounded in a try catch, but it'll still report the error to the Firebase console. So uh, we can see here another exception is thrown. It's non fatal, meaning it didn't crash the app, but once again, that's because we surrounded it in a try catch. And we can see the error that I threw in there. So file not found exception in button 2 error, probably the file path, which is what I wrote. And we can check out the, the details. And we can see on create started and then the button clicked and it crashed okay let's look at the final error error 3 and error 3 also doesn't crash the app oh never mind I don't know why it didn't crash the app when I clicked it the first time it definitely should and uh, yeah so I clicked it a second time and it looks like we get the error that I expected index out of bounds so now we'll go back to our Firebase console and we can see down here, index out of bounds exception, and it's fatal, meaning the app crashed. And we can see invalid index three, the size is three. That's it for this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. I would definitely recommend integrating Firebase crash reporting into your app. Um, for any application you use, it's gonna make it way easier to debug and way easier to help users if they're having problems and really pinpoint the issues. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave a like below. Check out all my social media platforms in the description below. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. I post all my videos to Twitter, so if you wanna get notifications for when I post new videos, that's the best way to do it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.